I'm Joan Steffen. And I'm Kevin McDowell. Just ahead on Carol 11 News, a United Airlines 737 crashes in Colorado Springs, killing all on board. Another plane goes down, this one in a residential area outside Chicago. We'll have details. And as terms for a Gulf War truce are hammered out, so are details of reparations for Gulf War vets. Those stories and more next on CARE 11 News. As the war comes to an end, follow the path to freedom hour by hour on CARE 11 News, your 24-hour news source. Welcome back spring and explore 15,000 square feet of gardens and over 600 exhibits at the Home and Garden Show March 6th through 10th at the new Minneapolis Convention Center. Sending a special gift is as easy as picking up the phone. Call Bachman's at 861-7311 and a sales consultant will help you select something just right. She can tell you what's arriving fresh from the airport or growing in our greenhouse. And something that's growing right now is our delightful Watch em Grow garden. A collection of spring bulbs that change and bloom right before your eyes. And it's just $10.99. So for birthdays, anniversaries, any occasion, give us a call. And we'll give someone special a reason to smile. Ah, uh, check out Gourmet Du Jour at Bonanza. Not your standard shrimp, no serene Bob. You see, these golden beauties are all you can eat shrimp. A crafty crustacean rarely seen outside the Amazon River. Bonanza's all-you-can-eat shrimp dinner is back. Mountains of crispy shrimp in our Fresh Tastics food bar, all only $5.99. Some might fear to appear gluttonous by order in seconds. But I avoid temptation. Go straight to thirds. Bonanza, where the extras don't cost extra. We'll chat with John Denver. Monday, live at 11. From your 24-hour news station, this is Jones Steffen, Kevin McDowell, Randy Shaver, and meteorologist Ellen Ferrara, and this is Carrie Levin News. It like it came straight down like a missile or a rocket, and I remarked, oh my God, there's been a plane crash, and my sister said, where? I said, it looks like it's in the... Uh... Witnesses described the crash of a United Airlines jet in Colorado and captured this dramatic footage as rescue crews scrambled to put out the flames. Good evening, everybody. United Flight 585 was making a final approach for landing in Colorado Springs when witnesses say it went into a nosedive, hit the ground, and burst into flames. That's right. The Federal Aviation Administration says the Boeing 737 carried 20 passengers, a crew of five, and it appears tonight that... Nobody survived. Now, the skies were clear at the time of the crash, but winds were gusting at 45 miles an hour. Investigators aren't sure if the weather was to blame. Colorado Springs was the final destination for 585. It originated in Peoria, Illinois, then made a stop in Moline, and then Denver, Colorado, before attempting that final leg. The sun hasn't gone down in Denver, which gives rescue crews a chance to comb through the wreckage for more bodies and clues. Steve Daniels of Station KUSA in Denver has the latest. <laughs> In just seconds, the United Airlines 737 was reduced to a fireball. This home video shows the explosion. It ripped through the Widefield neighborhood southeast of Colorado Springs. The jet barely missed, crashing into a crowded apartment complex. It was just coming straight down, straight in. It was at a little bit of an angle, but almost straight down and straight in. We saw the plane burning, you know, and you could smell the flesh burning, and you couldn't see anybody. United Airlines Flight 585 started its day in Peoria, Illinois, stopped in Moline and Denver before crashing on final approach into Colorado Springs Municipal Airport. The impact killed 20 passengers and a crew of five. The pilot reported no trouble. You can see weather was clear, winds were gusty. Investigators picked and sorted and scoured for any clues. All eyewitnesses know is it looked like a war zone, something out of the Middle East. This was just like a missile, just like a rocket coming straight down into the ground. The National Transportation Safety Board is now trying to figure out what happened, how 25 people died in the Sunday morning crash near Colorado Springs. Steve Daniels reported. And right now, the National Transportation Safety Board is assigning a team of investigators to look into that accident. And from its base in Chicago, United Airlines officials expressed regret for today's accident and promised full cooperation as the investigation begins. At a late afternoon news conference, officials said a plane load of safety experts are en route to Colorado Springs to assist national officials in the probe. As for the plane's history, officials claim its maintenance record is clean. We have no reported deferred maintenance items. The aircraft was current and had everything in maintenance check where it should be. 
United purchased the jet from a French airline in 1986. Residents of a Chicago suburb are counting their blessings tonight. Earlier today, a military jet crashed on a populated residential street in the town of Glenview. But their safety came at the expense of the three crew members aboard that T-39 military jet. They died instantly. Witnesses say it appears that the pilot deliberately steered the plane onto the middle of the street to avoid those homes. And an ocean away from the tragedy in Chicago, an apparent peace in the Middle East. Truce talks between the Allied officials and Iraqi commanders are described right now as a success. Iraqi leaders have agreed to meet all the demands for a ceasefire in the region. Included in that, the promise to swap prisoners of war. The historic meeting between the two sides took place in a tent in the Iraqi desert. Officials met for two hours to lay down terms for a truce. In a briefing that followed, Operation Desert Storm Commander Norman Schwarzkopf told reporters freedom is right around the corner for POWs. We have agreed that this release should be immediate. We have agreed that the details of this release must be worked out by the International Red Cross. He added, as a token of good faith on both sides, there will also be an immediate symbolic release. Bush administration officials say that could occur within the next 24 hours. In addition to an agreement on the prisoner of war issue, other conditions for a permanent truce have been met. Among them, Iraq has provided allied forces with locations of minefields in Kuwait and in Gulf waters. Also, when a ceasefire accord is signed and not before, allied forces will leave Iraqi territories. In Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Brigadier General Richard Neal made his last scheduled military briefing. Neal looked back on the short war, saying that the U.S. military had learned a lot from this experience. Of our weapon system. I think the lesson learned is that we knew that um, uh, we validated our training and I think we validated our tactics and techniques. With the end of the war come reports out of Iraq tonight of clashes between government forces and anti-Saddam protesters. One site of fighting is the Iraqi city of Basra. U.S. officials say that city is tonight in chaos. It's one thing to support troops fighting abroad in a war for the United States. It is something else to support them once they're home. That was the message at the center of a rally in Coon Rapids today, staged by a most enlightened welcoming committee. Carol Evans' Rick Capcella reports. Vietnam veterans saw the worst of what America had to offer troops after a war. Today, they lead the parade for a new generation of soldiers hell-bent on showing them the best. They need to come back to a society that says, I honor and respect your commitments, whether I agreed with the politics or not. Uh, if I didn't agree with the politics, I don't blame you because you're not a policymaker. Ready, folks? Let's walk. It is a simple act, a brisk walk, seven miles from one veteran's landmark to another. But they see their walk as a movement. In a national context, it is a movement toward pride and respect unlike anything seen in this country in a very long time. What a future we have. If these young people who, who went to Saudi Arabia and, and fought in Kuwait and Iraq are indicative of the future of this country, it's unlimited. What an exciting prospect when you think about it. Isn't it great? It's the best way we could demonstrate that you know, we really want to support our troops and you know, draw attention to the need to support them. With the war over in the Gulf, America's veterans say they're proud of society support during combat, but that support will need to be continued for years to come. Too many of their troops died by suicide, they say, in a society that did not want to deal with them. Rick Capcella, CARE 11 News. And Vietnam veterans today ask that Americans never again take out their frustrations on foot soldiers in a war waged by politicians. The experience of Vietnam has taught us a lot about what veterans need once they return to lives in the United States. Lawmakers have been rushing to propose legislation to help our newest vets returning from Operation Desert Storm. And Carol Evans, Mary Stuckey is in the newsroom now with more on what these uh, new vets can expect. Mayor? Well, thousands of troops, of course, from Minnesota were stationed in the Persian Gulf. Now, both state and federal lawmakers are trying to determine just what kind of help they need and deserve once they return to civilian life. Many of the men and women who took part in Operation Desert Storm left lives and families on very short notice. Now they've served their country and will receive a hero's welcome. 
but some lawmakers say they deserve more. It's expected that the GI Bill will be extended to vets of this latest war. That would likely include a monthly stipend of, say, $300 for education, preference in employment, and a guarantee for reservists that they'll get their jobs or a similar job back again. But finding money for the programs may be a challenge. I don't want to promise more than we can deliver. Uh, and, and the worst thing we can do is to bring these uh, uh, young men and women home to a hero's welcome and then have them stand in line waiting uh, for their VA benefits. Still, there are some new expensive proposals being considered by lawmakers. A bill that would exempt all Persian Gulf vets from tuition for two years at any Minnesota State University. Bonus pay of, say, $400 a person. A bill to make up the difference for reservists earning less than their civilian salaries. That would be capped at $50,000 a year. There's also legislation that would exempt Persian Gulf vets from paying income and property taxes for the time they were in service. And, of course, there are proposals to help veterans of Operation Desert Storm who are likely to experience some post-traumatic stress. VA psychologist Brian Engdahl says Vietnam taught us a lot about the kind of psychological help returning vets need and the kind of problems they face. And sort of general difficulty in, uh, in relaxing and enjoying life again and picking up where we left off. Now, lawmakers still have no idea just what all of this may cost. So, while they've been introducing a flood of legislation, tight budget times may prove an obstacle. Joan and Kevin? I would assume so. Thank you very much, Mary. Mm -hmm. The end of the war doesn't mean an end to questions about it, though. That is why CARE 11's Gulf Line remains open. Volunteers are standing by to take your calls about the war and its aftermath. The number to call is 542-1111, and phone lines will be open until 11 o'clock. Well, there's more to come on CARE 11 News. A warm-up will jumpstart the work week. I think we were just jumpstarted there. It made me dizzy. <laughs> the forecast is next. Stay with us. There's a time for love, a time for peace, and a time to show you care. CARE 11 invites you to share our pride in the USA. Just send us a self-addressed stamped envelope and we'll send you one of these flags free. Together we'll show we care. Always exciting, always something new. It's about that time when you need to get away. Always an adventure, always something to do. Where you can get the most fun. It's easy to get to. Always and times what they are, you want the best value on a vacation. You must have been thinking Las Vegas. Always on the money, Las Vegas, always on the money. You know, Lucy, we own the farm. Uh-huh. All the crops are in. Uh-huh. Got each other. Uh-huh. Still, there's something missing. A Lamborghini Diablo. My thoughts exactly. Pick up a specially marked package of Diet Pepsi and you could win a Lamborghini Diablo worth over $200,000 or millions of other great prizes. Hold on, Lucy. Come on, Dwayne. Kick her in the tail. Yes. You got the right one, baby. With 100% NutraSweet. Introducing the new S15 Jimmy Four-Door. Because getting to work shouldn't be work. The new S15 Jimmy four-door has more leg room and cargo space. Not to mention room for five campers and their gear. GMC truck. It's not just a truck anymore. It's quality on the road. Get special incentives on the new 91 S15 Jimmy four-door. You're watching CARE 11 News at 5. The makers of Sudafed 12-hour sinus medicine have announced a nationwide recall after two deaths and a serious illness were linked to cyanide-laced capsules. The incidents occurred in Washington State, where the drug has been pulled from store shelves. But the FDA is cautioning consumers not to panic, since no other tampering cases have been reported across the country. Voters in the Soviet republics of Latvia and Estonia flocked to the polls for today's referendum on independence from the Soviet Union. 
The states are joining their sister republic, Lithuania, in the push to secede from the USSR. Now, locally, Senator Paul Wellstone met with leaders from the Baltic community to learn more about their concerns. We were not talking about uh, all of a sudden getting the Cold War going again. We weren't talking about, you know, massive arms race. Um, but, you know, there are economic ties, there's uh, the political leadership level, there are plenty of opportunities, I think, for those of us in leadership positions in the United States Senate to be a voice on this. And elsewhere around the country, despite the wind and rain, a decent-sized crowd turned out in San Francisco's Chinatown last night to celebrate the Chinese New Year. 1991 is the year of the Ram. The annual parade wound around 16 city blocks. Fireworks, floats, and marching bands kicked off the Chinese lunar year of 4689. The parade traditionally draws thousands of people, but the rain that we've heard so much about kept uh, that crowd down. Ken Barlow filling in for Ellen Farrar, who is off this weekend. The rain in Northern California, Southern California has dried out again, just what they didn't need. We got any, uh, March, we got any big storms heading our way? Uh, nothing too big yet, but we are seeing some signs that things may be changing for the latter half of the week. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, nice warm day today. Well, relatively speaking, compared to yesterday, anything felt warm. Today we did make it up to 27 degrees, and uh, after an early morning low of 6, that's what we bottomed out at. That was about 3 o'clock this morning. After that, we started to rise a little bit. And a dramatic rise in temperature expected overnight tonight. 26 degrees right now. It's mostly clear. The sun is strong even at this hour. It'll be going down the next half hour to 45 minutes. So winds are calm, so there's no wind chill to talk about. Humidity is low, and the barometer is rising. Look at out in western, the western Dakotas right now, right at Rapid City. The Black Hills, 56 degrees at this hour, close to 60 in Valentine, Nebraska as well, just off to the south. 48 degrees up around Dickinson, 49 degrees at Bismarck. That's the warm stuff coming our way, but it'll take its time. The snow cover and also a stubborn storm system off the east coast causing the very slow warm-up, but it will occur. 14, the cold spot right now, uh, right around Duluth, and we get down to the south. And you can see everybody else reporting generally the same temperatures that we have at this hour. Talked about that East Coast storm, lots of rain. They had a drought in the southeast for years. Now they're getting more than enough rain. Severe thunderstorms, tornado watches, and the thing is stuck. The atmosphere has come to a grinding halt. That's why the high pressure system that was over us last night, which uh, got us very cold yesterday and last night, is very stubborn to leave. Everything's choked up, bottleneck, but this thing will start to move up the coast, and as it does, it will allow for things to slowly change. Along the west coast, there's a mess. You can see it they are sliding to the east. One little system here will go well to our north. The warm air will flow in. We're talking about close to 50 in the southwest corner of the state tomorrow. Satellite shows us all the clouds along the west coast, but notice how the systems dry out as they move toward the east. Watch this one. We'll take it back again and watch it as it dries out and comes to the east. We'll see that pattern again during the day tomorrow and again on Tuesday with nothing more than rain and snow showers expected at that time. However, by the end of the week, as I told Kevin just a minute ago, it does look like there's a bigger storm coming into the Pacific Northwest. Now we can see high temperatures during the day tomorrow at about 10 degrees on what we had today at least. 40 to 45 degrees, a nice band of 40s, 30s, the cold spot, really not too cold at all, 50s and 60s down to the southwest. Look at, look at the details now, if I can say it. For overnight tonight, it will stay mostly clear for a time, then some increasing high clouds. Temperatures initially in the next three or four hours will drop down to between 12 and 17 and then rise after midnight. Speaking of rising, when you rise tomorrow morning, it'll be noticeably warmer, 40 to 45 tomorrow. Just a brief passing sprinkle is about it. South winds increasing up to 20 miles per hour and a rain or snow shower on Tuesday, but nothing big, 39 and a gradual cool down with some scattered flurries Wednesday and Thursday. And again, by Friday, there's a pretty good chance of some wet snow developing. Are you looking for a big storm? Uh, in March, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot You're of smart. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Just ahead in sports, the Gopher basketball team takes to the court in Michigan in search of a second straight win. Randy Shaver is next with that and on the rest of the day's sports when we come right back. There's a time for love, a time for peace, and a time to show you care. It's American pride that we share and we're thinking.
Try something different. La Choy Chow Mein Noodles on Salads. They're better together. Sending a special gift is as easy as picking up the phone. Call Bachman's at 861-7311 and a sales consultant will help you select something just right. She can tell you what's arriving fresh from the airport or growing in our greenhouse. And something that's growing right now is our delightful Watch em Grow Garden, a collection of spring bulbs that change and bloom right before your eyes. And it's just $10.99. So for birthdays, anniversaries, any occasion, give us a call, and we'll give someone special a reason to smile. Ah, uh, check out Gourmet Du Jour at Bonanza. Not your standard shrimp, no siree, Bob. You see, these golden beauties, you're all you can eat shrimp. A crafty crustacean rarely seen outside the Amazon River. Bonanza's all-you-can-eat shrimp dinner is back. Mountains of crispy shrimp in our Fresh Tastics food bar, all only $5.99. Some might fear to appear gluttonous by ordering seconds. I avoid temptation. Go straight to thirds. Bonanza. Where the extras don't cost extra. The Gophers took to the road in search of a little momentum this weekend. Found none. Hmm? This season's almost over. It is. Two more games left for this team. And, you know, I think we had too many high expectations, I think, for this ball team. They just never jailed. Uh, Which is surprising under Clem Haskins. Surprising leader. a little bit, I think. The senior leadership was there at times, and at other times it wasn't. I think Bond's injury certainly didn't help. But mm -hmm. Gopher basketball team has suffered through a tough, tough Big Ten season. But with a few games left, they were hoping to get something going today. They lost at Michigan, however, the final 68-60. Demetrius Caleb hit some three-pointers today that just broke the Gophers' back. This one right here in the first half, and it was pretty much over, really. Dana Jackson had a good, decent ball game, scores two on the baseline jumper. The Gophers did pull to within seven in the second half. Kevin Lynch, who did not hit a field goal until 16 minutes left in the game, hit a three-pointer here to cut it to 53-46. But look at this shot by James Vosco in the lane. The double pump, the score, he's fouled. The final as we go to the scoreboard was 68-60. Gophers fall to 11-15 and overall. With two games left, their last home game is Saturday against Wisconsin. Ohio State wraps up a share of the Big Ten title today with a win over Michigan State. Great basketball game at Columbus. Late in the second half, Jimmy Jackson will get the ball. He'll score the uncontested jam. The game tied. Time running out. Buckeyes try a last-second shot, and Mark Baker is fouled on the play with no time left. Now, they had to go to a television replay to check it out to make sure... And then they go, they send Jamal Brown to the free throw line. Now he missed one. And then he'll hit the second, and Ohio State wins this game 65 64, the final. So the Buckeyes can wrap up a Big Ten title this week, the first since 1971. NCAA tournament bids come out next weekend, so this Sunday becomes Showdown Sunday with many conference finales set. And the ACC number eight Duke traveled down Tobacco Road to face number four North Carolina at the Dean Dome. Duke jumped out to an early lead for most of the game. Bobby Hurley, great pass. Grant Hill for the jam. Duke built an 18-point lead in the second half. Christian Leitner hits for two while off balance, but North Carolina staged a furious rally. Watch the great save coming up by Hubert Davis. The blind pass ends up in the hands of teammate George Lynch, who lays it in. Carolina got to within three points of Duke late, but the final was 83-77. Duke wins the ACC title. Meanwhile, at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, Georgetown looked to upset Syracuse. Alonzo Mourning played well, two of his 24. But Syracuse con continues to make a bid for the number one seed in next week's draw. Billy Owens for three. He had 21. Check the final, and Syracuse wins at home. But look at the shocker in the Southwest Conference. Texas over Arkansas, 99-86. Duke by six, and Nebraska wraps up the Big 8 title with a win over Kansas. The NBA regular season's heading down the home stretch, and teams continue to jockey for playoff position. This afternoon in Boston, the Celtics entertain Portland in what might be, might be a preview of the NBA championship series. And Larry Bird buried three here. He had 28 points in Boston, led for three quarters today. But in the fourth, it's fabulous plays like this. Clyde, the glide, Drexler fools Larry Bird behind the head pass to Danny Ainge. 
We check the final. 116-107. Portland snapped a four-game losing streak. Utah, Carl Malone had 35 points and 12 rebounds. San Antonio wins on the road today. David Robinson had 26. Atlanta wins on the road. They should be celebrating Atlanta. They don't do that very often. And Houston wins on the road. Kenny Smith had 34. Final round of the Doral Open postponed today because of bad weather. They'll continue that tomorrow morning. And of course, tonight at 10 o'clock, it's a super bloopers. And we were just talking about this before. We celebrate the one-year anniversary of Irv Levine's <laughs> tele television debut. Remember that a right little, here? A little known, but much beloved anniversary. Yes, so we will celebrate uh, the Irv debut tonight on super bloopers You at won't want to miss it. Trust us. You won't, you won't want to miss it. It was uh, quite a day in it television history. It was astounding. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Irv paid me to say that. When we come back, we'll update our top story and we'll tell you about what could be the hottest seat in the Midwest. Stay with us. How long does it take to get a really good workout? workout. I used to work out for an hour and a half with machines and free weights. That was then, then. This is now. I switched to the 30-minute workout with that amazing light circuit equipment. For total fitness, join U.S. Swim and Fitness now for just $24 a month. Call 1-800-695-7777. Is 30 minutes enough? You tell me. Ever wonder what they mean by zestfully clean? It's the feeling you get when... Please hold on to the bar. Zestfully clean. That's zestfully clean. At Steve's Warehouse Discount Foods, I won't sell it to you until we can buy it at the lowest possible price. No, not cheap enough. What? At that price, someone else can sell it. I promise you the lowest everyday prices, so if we can't buy it cheap, we just won't sell it. No, keep it at that price. It's still not cheap enough. My buyer drives a hard bargain to get you the lowest possible prices. Now it's cheap enough. Steve's Warehouse Discount Foods. If it's not cheap enough for us, it's not cheap enough for you. Nowadays, ComDate's computer dating service makes meeting that special person of the opposite sex easier than ever. With ComDate's, you'll normally meet at least two new people each month. Join ComDate's today and you can be dating new people next week. A one-year membership is only $30. Find out how ComDate's computer dating service gets you together with the opposite sex. ComDate's will be glad to send you a free, no-obligation brochure. Call 333-8088 now or check your Minneapolis and St. Paul White pages for computer dating service. Taking another look at our top story tonight, a United Airlines Boeing 737 crashed outside Colorado Springs, Colorado today, killing all 25 people on board. The plane was making a final approach to Colorado Springs Airport when it made a nosedive into a residential neighborhood in the middle of a park. United Flight 585 left Peoria, Illinois this morning and passed through Moline and Denver before crashing. Finally tonight, would you pay $250 for a White Sox seat? Well, it sounds like a lot, but you get to keep the seat forever. Chairs from the old Comiskey Park, which is set for demolition, are now on the block for fans and memorabilia collectors. When the park closed after last year's baseball season, it was the oldest stadium in the major leagues. It's too bad to see that go. I saw a few memories there last year. Yeah, yeah it was great. It was a sellout though. game when they hosted <laughs> Oakland. And I sat in the right field bleachers. It was out outstanding. Yeah. Great ballpark. Good yeah. Beautiful ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Weather. Warming trend. Magic words this time of year. We have uh, much warmer temperatures on the way, folks. Teens for the first part of tonight. And with a partly cloudy sky, we'll see rising temperatures after midnight. Right up into the 20s, 30s, and 40s tomorrow with just a brief passing shower. Again, the Gopher basketball team lost today at Michigan 68-60. Tonight at 10, super bloopers. If you're an Irv Levine fan, make sure you <laughs> and, tune in tonight. And, and who isn't? <laughs> and who isn't? Who isn't an Irv Levine fan? Huh? That's an interesting. That's a nice shot. Hi. That's an interesting <laughs> shot. Well, let's, let's <laughs> say good night on that note. We'll Thanks see you at 10. Joining. is blowing.
America's most decorated soldier became a movie star, but why did Audie Murphy die a broken man? The story on Entertainment Tonight. Monday at 6.30 on Carrie Levin.